system. Please explain to us what the hell is going on here. I mean, just quickly, what will happen is he will be turned over to the the CIA. Uh, he will be uh, what we call it will be extraordinary rendition. He'll have a he'll have a hood put over his head. Uh, he'll be shackled and chained. He'll be put on a black flight, uh, one of these CIA flights. He will be taken to the United States, uh, put in solitary confinement, which is uh, over it is a form of torture. It's how people break and often break very quickly. Um, he will be relentlessly interrogated. Um, there will be uh, all sorts of psychological techniques, uh, which is uh, hot, very, it'll be very hot in his cell and then it'll be very cold. Um, they will constantly wake him every few hours so he'll be sleep deprived, moving him from one cell to another. Um, they will um, maybe even put him in, uh, they call it a dry cell where uh, there's no water. He has to ask for water uh, to go to the bathroom or wash his hands. Um, uh, and, you know, everyone has a breaking point. Um, uh, and, and they will s attempt to psychologically destroy him. And we have seen with Guantanamo uh, that several of these uh, detainees, uh, most of whom are just sold to the United States by warlords in Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, are emotionally crippled for life. Um, so it will be uh, scientific torture. They used to say, I used to cover the Stasi state in East Germany, and they, the joke in the Stasi state was the Gestapo broke bones and the Stasi break minds. Uh, and uh, that's what they'll do. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Uh, and I've seen it with Muslims who have been entrapped in the United States in so called terrorism plots. And by the time they shuffle into court, they're a zombie. So, um, that and, and if he will be sentenced to uh, life without parole, uh, and probably in prolonged solitary confinement. I mean, uh, I teach in a prison. I mean, I know how the prison system in the United States works. And of course, I've covered them as a reporter for the New York Times. So I hope I'm wrong. I think the last hope uh, is that there is enough independence within the British judicial system, which is why pressure on Britain is key. Uh, to understand that this is an egregious violation of international law and then within the United States domestic law. Um, I just don't know enough about the British judicial system to tell you whether they have that kind of independence and integrity and spine. Uh, but I can assure you that the United States, the judicial system in the United States does not.